This video is to give you an introduction to the new liquid effect, which is coming um, in a release in XLights uh, pretty soon. This is a result of integrating uh, the Google Liquid Fun um, physics, 2D physics library into XLights, and I've built an effect um, which uh, just uses the particle physics, physics element of that. Uh, there's lots of other possibilities that we could do with the library, but I've built an effect here um, which pretty much lets you uh, uh, generate a whole bunch of particle physics type um, effects. And I, I wanted to walk you through some and give you an understanding of what's there. Um, so before I do that, um, how about I quickly show you some samples so you can sort of see the sorts of things that are going on. Then I'll come back and I'll walk you through all of the options and there's a lot of options here. Um, it's by f nowhere near as many as I could have added, but it's the kind of things that I kind of uh, came up with. Um, so, so let's take uh, the animation here. So here we have a bunch of them, each one with a different set of parameters. So this one here is pretty much the default. Uh, it's got some barriers against which the particles build up against. Um, it's got a bit of a color curve going on there with red, green, and blue. Um, and so the particles are changing over time. And as you can see, the particles are mixing together when they come into contact with each other. And so you get a color mixing effect. Uh, this one here is just a simple water fountain. Uh, the particles are shooting up. Um, once gravity starts to take over, they all gather at the top and then they fall away down to the down to, down to here. Um, I don't have any ground here, so the water's just falling below the screen, uh, which looks pretty good. Um, here you just have a couple of um, emitters going on. You've got one at the top here pushing it out, one on the side here, and they come together and the colours merge again. Uh, here, uh, we're actually moving one of the particle emitters uh, back. So we've got the three fixed ones around the outside. Now you'll notice when that this effect resets that it already looks like it's been filled in and that's because um, I've got a concept here called warm up frames, which basically means that it pretends that there were 76 frames before the effect starts to play and that lets you fill the, the space up with particles. So it doesn't have to start as a, a black screen with just a few particles starting to be emitted and then change. So it gives you that option of, of having something that's fully formed. Uh, here's just a, a couple of streams of particles coming together. Um, and finally here, uh, we just have a, a fountain changing colour from the bottom. Um, the other one I, I wanted to quickly show you is I've also um, given you the ability uh, to tune it to music. And if I shift double click on that, it'll select that part of the song and I can play it. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but that's, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I can never remember the name of the song, I'm hopeless with music. And so you can see that the fountain, the amount of uh, particles coming out of the fountain is proportional to the um, the strength of the signal. So because this is quite a weak signal, you get these spurts coming up and it looks pretty good. So not sure whether that audio comes through or not. Okay, so let's look at exactly how we go about making all of this up. So I'm going to go and drag another one on. I have to fix the icon up. Icons are not my specialty. Um, by default, it's copying the last one. So let's start with the options. So first of all, you have a set of options up the top here, which are universal. They apply to all of the emitters. And then you've got four emitters. Now, one emitter is mandatory, and you can optionally enable uh, emitters two, three, and four. Um, by default, emitter one takes the first color, um, and then the next enable emitter takes the next color and so on. And obviously you can use color curves if you want to. Um, up the top here, we have barriers. So here we can set a, a right barrier and a left barrier. And when the particles hit those barriers, after it re-renders, um, let's see, I'll let me just pump that up a little bit. Uh, sorry. 
right? So as you can see, as the particles hit the barriers on the sides, they stop. Uh, they're falling down the bottom because there's no bottom barrier. If I put a bottom barrier there, they'll start to build up at the bottom and I can put a top barrier as well, which will slowly fill up the space with particles. Um, I actually find it's quite useful to leave an open barrier, which gives the particle somewhere to go. Uh, the hold particle colour, if you, if you don't set hold particle colour, um, basically the colour of the particles on each frame is set by whatever the first colour is and it ignores all the other colours um, for that thing. So for instance, if I, if I set a colour curve here, just quickly, uh, there's a good one. Okay, so by default, the particles hold their color. So you can see that as they change color, the blue, the red, and the purple and green, etc., they all stay around. Uh, if I say don't hold the particle color, then as the color curve goes through, all the particles change to match the color curve. Um, so when you do whole particle color, I'm actually tra tracking the color of each and every particle that's emitted and displaying that. Uh, when you select mixed colors, um, that causes the particles when they collide with one another to mix their colors together. And so you get a, a smoother color effect here um, when it's running. Um, if you don't do the mixed colors, it's more like a powder mixing together. You'll still get what appears to be a mixing of the color, but you can see that it's still quite distinct, although there's colors in there, they're still quite distinct um, and pixelated. Generally, I prefer the, the mixed colors. The type, so there's a bunch of types here. To be honest, nine times out of 10, I, I struggle to tell the difference between them. But these basically govern how the particles interact with each other. So if you choose something like a viscous, um, I believe the particles clump together a little more than they otherwise would. Um, the other one that I quite like is uh, uh, the powder. So under the powder, they don't, they don't clump together at all. And you can see that they're, Although they are exchanging colours, they are staying a lot, lot more separated than they were when it was viscous. There's a whole bunch of them there. Try them out, see which ones you like. Um, lifetime governs how long each particle lives for. Um, at the moment, I think this is, uh, that's actually 1,000 is 10 seconds. So if you want it to live for, you know, just uh, a second or or less, you can see once you start to get down small, the particles all die out once they reach that age. And so you don't get them reaching the side walls. They will all die within plus or minus 10% of that age. Um, so that's uh, about 0.4 of a second. So plus or minus, you know, around about 36 milliseconds uh, onwards. Uh, is that right? Thir no, th three. 0.36 to 0.45 of a second is approximately how long I'll live for. Um, so that's that. Size governs the size of the particles. Um, by default, this is, this is uh, well, it's actually a, the way in which the physics engine works. 500 is actually half a metre. And so basically, the, the larger this number is, the more there is separation between the particles. And so as you get it bigger, it becomes a much more um, intense effect. Um, so here, it's, they're reasonably small. As I ramp it up, you can see you're now getting a much more... Um, random sort of jumping around type thing and that's just because the particles are so big. Um, if you go too small, um, right down to one, you can see the particles almost never get away from the zero point just because they're too small. Um, so playing with that. The other thing that size, size and uh, things like flow and velocity, when we get to those, uh, they interact together quite significantly. So um, choosing the right uh, mix of those is quite important to get deciding the right sort of flow that you're getting. 
for instance, this is actually emitting the particles all in a single direction, um, but that's not actually what's happening. And the reason that's not happening is because it's effectively trying to emit 100 particles in a very small amount of space every frame. And when you have that many particles that quickly, what happens is they get really compressed together and so it explodes out. It's like when you turn a, a hose off and you've got one of those screw nozzle things. As you get almost to closing it, the spray gets really wide wide um, and really fine that's effectively what you're getting there and uh, when we get down to the flow we'll lower the flow down and you'll see what I mean how that varies um, so that's the size parameter the warm-up frames so so if I click on the effect so it restarts um, and I set the warm-up frames to zero when it starts there's nothing there and it just launches up if you do some warm-up frames what happens is that's saying ex essentially show a hundred so there's 20 frames a second so 151 frames worth of of processing is done before it renders even the first frame and that causes the the effect to be largely formed before it then starts to go and apply um, all the settings etc uh, when it comes to things like the color curve that means that those first 150 frames it's going to use red because that's the start of the color um, so that's why it starts off very red and then the other colors start to get introduced um, so that's warm-up frames and then you've got a set of settings that are that uh, match according to um, uh, for each of the emitters and you can have multiple emitters um, so now we've got two we've got one on the left and one on the right uh, second one's red let's make it a color we're not otherwise using like yellow um, okay so now you've got two emitters going um, sending particles up um, and interestingly because we're running so many frames it means it's already getting quite full even before it starts um, showing the effect and that's just because of the number of warm-up frames I've got if I was to lower that down it, yeah you can see it starts a little bit more empty and not quite so full so the x and the y coordinates here um, so we'll do the red one down here so this controls the x coordinate of where that red emitter is and the y controls how high up that emitter is so you can put it in the middle or up on the top it doesn't really matter uh, the direction is the direction in degrees now zero degrees is uh, pointing to the right um, 90 is pointing up um, 180 is pointing to the left and 270 is pointing down and 360 is pointing uh, right again. Now, like I said, the direction really is only interesting when you really reduce the flow. If we get the flow down to one um, on both of them. So this means it's emitting one particle per frame. Um, and so now you can see that there is actually a um, direction. Not sure why. Why is it not emitting the red one? What have I done? It's a bit odd. Oh. Maybe yes, that re that's the reason because I had flow matches the music. So you can see that the uh, the red one is is shooting um, it up at 90 degrees um, and number two is shooting across at zero degrees so it's shooting it from left to right um, so that's how the direction works but once the flow gets um, once you get to a flow of you know 10 it's starting to get reasonably spread out at five I think you, you get a reasonable shape um, but this interplays quite strongly with the size of the, the uh, pixels. If I was to reduce this down to 100, you could see that directionally it, uh, it follows it a little better. Um, so they do interplay together um, and you'll have to have experiments with that. Um, velocity is how fast the, pic the particle is emitted at. Um, so you can, you can, if you increase the velocity, then it's obviously going to shoot the particles higher. Um, 
and the flow, like I say, that's the number of particles that are emitted from that emitter on each frame. And so the higher that is, the more they will tend to burst out. And then finally, you have this flow matches music, and that's the thing that causes, um, so basically what it will do is it will take that value of five and it will multiply it by the intensity of the music. Um, the music is, is not that intense here, and so uh, you'll only get a certain amount um, going on. Um, this is, yeah, the yellow. So if you look at the yellow, you can see that there's, it, it's quite weak because the music's not that intense. If I was to move this over to here and re-render it, um, uh, we, we see that it jumps up when it hits those, those noisier parts of the song. So that's the settings. There's quite a few of them there to play with. Um, they do produce some quite starkly different effects. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the sorts of presets that people come up with um, to share uh, where they get some really interesting patterns uh, out of this effect. Um, so um, at the moment, it's probably not going to make the next release. Sean's trying to get 64-bit into the next release, and I'm not confident that we can get the 64-bit version of this working in a, in a couple of days. Um, so it will probably come in the release after. Thanks, guys.